Well, hey everyone, and welcome to Dragged Out. I'm Joseph Shepard, and each week we dive into one-on-ones with some of your favorite queens who just so happen to go home a little bit early on RuPaul's Drag Race. Today's guest is Chicago Excellence, who can beat the hell out of a face. And most of you know her from season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race. Please welcome Layla McQueen. How are you doing? Hi. I'm so much better now that I'm here right. and that I have this Red Bull inside my body. <laughs> are, are you the type of person who's like a very like, you need the energy, you need the caffeine? As of lately, absolutely. After this year, yes. <laughs> This year has been shit. <laughs> Putting it mildly, but... How long actually have you been doing drag? When was the first time you got into it? So, as of this June, next month, it'll be 10 years of me working in bars, officially, in 12 years of me, like, going to house parties and, like, playing with makeup and wearing dresses, like, in secret. Secret. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I want you to say, like, what was it like going to house parties two years before you started doing, like, in public? Like, what was that like? It was great because I was the center of attention and I was the funnest one. <laughs> in my own mind, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at, like, 12 years ago compared to now. What is your drag evolution? I've become very weathered. Oh, my drag, my drag, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's become weathered too. Oh, fully. Um, I've just become, like, I have become more realized in the things I like, because also, like, dressing up as house parties and, like, playing around, you, like, don't know what you're doing, so you're just kind of, like, fucking around and whatever. And then, like, when I performed in bars, I grew up in a, I grew up in the, like, coast of Massachusetts in a very small town and then I went to school in New Hampshire even though it was like a city in New Hampshire New Hampshire is not a very like progressive state so even when I was like working at bars and stuff then it wasn't until really when I got off Drag Race and then like started seeing more of the world and started seeing like more queer people and like just seeing all different things like started to become more realized and like I do like this I do like that or I've always liked this but I never did it because of where I was or the circumstances so I've just become more like I guess comfortable in the things I like and don't like and it's not so much, when I first started doing drag, there's always that thing where it's like a persona. I feel like when you first start, that's like the whatever, and it's not really the case anymore. It's like two parts of the same person. One's just a little more loud than the other. Speaking of loud, upon researching you, I learned that you had, you have a little thing called misophonia. And I yeah. was like, oh my gosh, I feel like you were my twin because I was diagnosed with um, autism spectrum disorder back in October. And one of the things that I have a big time with is misophonia and it's like fucking awful. And I bought these things here and I'm gonna send them like to you. They literally are the best things in the world. It looks like an earplug, but there's a hole in the middle. So it takes the decibels of everything around you and brings it down quite a bit. For real? Still, yeah, and you can still hear everything going on around you. Oh, I love that. I My mother, we kind of, so I figured out I had it. Like, I'm, I, it sounds weird to be like, I have misophonia because it's not like a diag, I, I feel like it's not like a diagnosable whatever. I don't know, just... My mother also is very, it's very specific noises. Like I cannot listen to people eat. If I'm eating, everyone's eating, we're in a restaurant. I remember one time when I was younger, I was at my grandparents' house and I stopped by and my parents were there and they were all having like a little cookout, but it was like, they have a porch. So they were eating inside, even though they were like cooking the grill on the porch. And I remember I didn't eat anything or I didn't have, part of it whatever i'm sitting there and there's five people around me eating corn on the cob and i wanted to jump out the window i was like this is too much this is far too much <laughs> did you did you say anything to your mom like did you say anything loud loud 
I think I was old enough where I think I was I just got my license so I was like young but I was old enough to drive and I think I was like uh I need to go meet a friend I'll come back later or something because I was like I think later I probably told my mom my mom has a big thing with like people chewing ice or like my dad eats cereal like I it sounds like he's sawing wood I just don't get when I just don't get when liquids make crunchy noises it's fucking sick it's sick. ASMR videos, get them out of here. Yes, I get them out. <laughs> never understood ASMR videos. I do not get it. It makes me uncomfortable. I feel like somebody's like scratching a chalkboard in my ear. I'm like, this is not going to work. That one woman with the pickle who slowly eats pickles in their microphone, I'm sure she's a lovely lady. I need her to get the fuck out of here with that shit. She has to stop. <laughs> that pickles and just in general, I don't, that's a no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, your makeup right now is fucking fantastic. Like, is it? I think, yeah. I, you were like, you can get in drag, you don't have to. But then I was like, I feel like I should. But I said that to myself an hour before this call. So I was like, okay, let's just put on like a little like, let's just look like messy and fun. <laughs> It's just, no, it's it's honestly, like, it is so much fun. And I think that there's also, like, this big evolution between you on Drag Race to you now. I love that you are incorporating beard, stash, and everything in it. I love that you're just being you. Like, it's just, like, it comes off so well. Like, do you see that? Like, do you do you like that now? Um, so I... I've never had a mustache. I've never had a beard in my life. Um, so until when quarantine happened, um, I like bearded drag and I like other people doing it. I guess I was always just like so used to shaving that I was like, oh, it's not for me. But then during quarantine and COVID and all these things, I was like, start playing around with it. Cause I really like, even before Madam Madness got on Drag Race, I've always been like, I love her makeup and the way she incorporates her beard. And like, I love Lucy Stool and Pulp Friction and Blackberry and all these other amazing like bearded queens. I just never really did it myself. I don't know why, but like when I just started doing it during quarantine to be like, let's switch it up. I don't, I don't feel comfortable shaving my, my anxiety and my looks and gaining weight are a little bit shot while we're just at home. But I'm like, I kind of dig it. Not for everything, but I feel like because it's just an extension of me being like a, a gay or queer weirdo like this drag that's kind of grungy or whatever it just makes sense and is cool for some things yeah i mean it makes a lot of sense and i think that just like looking at you now like i don't i don't know like i i would go out to a club just to see you like it's very like this whole <laughs> realm of everything like it you just incorporated extremely well like when did you learn about your love of makeup because you do makeup on other people too, right? I do. I am a makeup artist. I am mainly a makeup artist now on HBO. I'm going to plug it now since we're bringing it up. On HBO's We're Here, I do Bob's makeup and do Bob's drag uh, daughter's makeup and it's really awesome. So and, are um, you, do you travel around a lot with the, with the show? Yes. Yes. Uh, I came in halfway through season one and now we are starting back on season two. So we're doing that, taking it, you know, with COVID things as we can. But yes. The, the people that are on We Are Here are normally like, you know, either people that are just coming into the drag scene that they, you know, it may be a family. It may be somebody like that who is not used to that, trying to do it for, you know, a daughter or a son and stuff. What is it like working with people who have not necessarily experienced the drag world fully? It's a lot of fun and it's a lot of new territory and it's not like a, it's the way I describe it. It's like, it is very like Priscilla queen of the desert and like a little bit of queer eye, but it's really not a makeover show. It's not like a, yes, honey, we're going to turn you out. It's going to be fierce. It's like, we are taking individual unique stories of people in really not great areas of the world and using the art of drag to help tell their story, find a new self-confidence, like put them in a different situation that makes them feel all that love and adrenaline that you get at a drag show. But because it's not like, like, we're just going to turn you out and make you look fierce. It's like, we do a lot of like, we've done bearded drag and drag kings and a lot of uh, trans people, people who want to be in high whore drag, subtle drag. They want beards painted on them, more androgynous. Like we really cover everything and really on team Bob, we work a lot, not the other teams also, but like I am 
te- we're very much like different. We don't interact throughout until show day with all the other mm-hmm. teams. But when team Bob, like Bob is really, really great at tailoring someone's story and making like a fun drag number to really incorporate all the parts of them that they want to show. Do you get a more of a thrill of doing your own makeup or doing somebody else's? I think it's different. And I'm very grateful to be doing this because um, I just kind of, I always, sorry, I tend to babble. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very happy to be doing this, especially at this point, because mm-hmm. performing in bars and stuff like that, it gets a little exhausting. And um, this was like a nice switch up and a nice way for me to start doing something I've always wanted to do, but haven't really, you know, performing at bars was paying the rent. So I wasn't trying to get makeup gigs or do that. Mm-hmm. And then with COVID happening or different things, or sometimes, you know, new seasons come out and sometimes a season like literally like a time of the year is a little bit slow and it's more uh busy for like the newer girls which is totally fine um but this is like cool I'm exercising different skill sets in a different way so I really enjoy that aspect of it for sure it's also really cool because that is like actually what you do like you know just just in general like you know doing drag and putting the face on then you're applying that somewhere else so you're still being creative you're still having that like umph behind it um looking at your career how long had you been doing drag before rupaul's drag race okay so i've been performing in bars for 10 years and we filmed our season of drag race july of 2015 so i have been doing drag for four years before does that sound right again yeah that sounds about right because i i remember meeting you on the red carpet of the finale of season eight you were in a purple wig you were wearing for the our finale i wore a purple ponytail a purple robe and this like corset with purple baby heads and painted and graffitied it sounded great in, in theory, and I guess I looked, I did look good that night, but I do, I look back on so much of my drag, even from like two years ago, and I'm like, ugh, like a little cringe. <laughs> I mean, it's always like bad too, like when you look back on photos of yourself and you're like, Jesus, what in the world was I thinking? Like Abercrombie and Fitch, American Eagle, no, fifth grader, what are you doing? Like, I, I feel like it. I think it's a healthy thing to look back on yourself from years ago and be like, oh my God, that was trash. Like I I appreciate, I think drag in general, like it should always be an evolution of some sort and some variety. So I think it's healthy to think I looked like a piece of shit a couple years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, speaking of drag, you end up on a little show called RuPaul's Drag Race. And you were on sure season did. eight. Oh my goodness. You were single on digits. Single digits. Hundred episode. Digits. Um, was, how many times had you auditioned before? Was it just one? I auditioned three times. Okay. And then I had read that you met RuPaul before? Vaguely, yeah. There was like this little diner near my dorm room that I was at one time. I do not know why RuPaul was coming. With some some fags are like, RuPaul's coming to town. Then he's going to the Red Arrow Diner, and I'm like, Well, I gotta go. <laughs> it, I don't know. I could not. I don't even think I could have told you that 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 day. I was like, Wait, why is she here? Why is she? I'm like so she got she like came over and she goes, I'm RuPaul, not Ron Paul. I'm not running for anything. I was like, okay. I mean, I still had fun, but looking back on it, I was like, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> Wait, was she performing in a diner? Or did was she eating? She just showed up out of drag, went into the diner. I don't know. I do not. I could not tell you. <laughs> that is so bizarre. And you and yourself. Wait, did you dress up in drag and go there? No, but I looked pretty questionably flamboyant back then, out of drag. <laughs> I got to college and was like, that's it, mom. And I cut the tops off all my t-shirts and always had like off the shoulder and I had really ugly hair. I was just like, I'm not going to cut it. I'm only going to cut half of it. It was was, some choices were made. What, what inspired your punk aesthetic? Like, where did that come from? Um, so my drag, I have never been the kind of person who's been like, 
when I did anything theater, the few theater things I did, I was behind the scenes. I was never like a, I need to be on stage. I want to be like performing, performing. Um, in that capacity, like remembering lines and singing, like I'm, I can't sing, um, but I always wanted to be like a rock star. I really like that kind of energy. And so I think my drag just kind of funneled its way through that kind of aspect where it's like not really about the singing or the dancing or whatever. It's like about the general vibe I'm giving out. And I think that's what I've evolved into. And I've just always liked darker, you know, I was that kid who was like, watch Disney movies and was like, yeah, I like the villains, not the princesses. I just liked, it just all was cool. I, can, I couldn't tell you where it started because as a little, little kid, like when I was a tiny preschool age, I would always dress up as witches. I was obsessed with witches loved witches could not tell you where any of that started it's just always just been a thing and and you you're rocking the uh jafar mustache right now that's what i see on, oh on full you. i mean talk about faggot jafar are you kidding jafar me jafar was you know i <laughs> like i read this whole conspiracy theory that the villains are all gay and i believe it 100 percent. like oh they're all queer coded it, yes. it makes so much sense Ursula, biggest drag queen of all, like inspired by divine, like all of that is just so there. I'm sorry, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I, this is like insane. Uh, to be fair, my 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 neighbor's Wi-Fi, they are like I'm like across the courtyard. It's a little shaky, but for some reason, better than mine. Yeah, also they're I mean, not to not to out their password but i called and i'm like what can i just use the password for your wi-fi he's like yeah it's uh the password's jungle juice platinum all capital letters at the beginning i'm like of course it is i don't know why well, at, I le at, at least you know that they love snorting a little bit of poppers <laughs> oh we are we already knew that <laughs> anyways where did i cut off <laughs> Um, oh, well, you know, guys at home, there was a technical difficulty and now we're back with uh, Layla and um, again. Yeah, again, you know, let, let, let's talk about your actual time on Drag Race. Do you remember walking through that workroom door? <laughs> oh, this subject will be a short, short talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So first off, I feel like I didn't answer this earlier. Um, I auditioned three times and I fully like when I got on Drag Race, we were single digit seasons. Matthew Anderson still did our promo pictures. Um, and we also were the last season on Logo. So things were very different than they are now. And also when I was auditioning, the first time I auditioned, I was like, I work and I do drag. I love the show. Let's just audition. I'm not going to get on. I'm too young. Uh, but let's just like throw the, our hat in the ring. Why not? And then the second year I was like, I have to get on this show because I hate going to school and I need something else to do. Didn't get on. And then the third year I was like, well, I'm graduating. I'm moving back to my parents' house. I'm waiting tables. I like doing drag. I like the show. It's, it was much different than it is now. It's like a lot of people are so much more prepared. There's so much more to be expected. The standards are higher. The fame and notoriety is more guaranteed. I wasn't really going after that when I auditioned. I was just like, I do drag. I really like the show. Fuck it. Why not? Let's just like have fun. Um, obviously going into it, that's why I'm never like, I just like auditioned for fun. I didn't know how TV worked. I didn't know how any of this like reality shows, like it just was like, I like doing all this. Why not? Um, I was never trying to get like famous or anything. And I, that's why I partially like, uh, with my time on Drag Race, when people are like, you were robbed. I was like, I was okay. I think, I think the cards fell how they fell. And I'm not mad at what happened because I look back on it being like, who is that person? Literally, I'm like, that is, I do not know, completely different people. Looks, personality, interests, like everything. Looking at your time on the show, you know, one thing that people always say, especially recently as the show has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, is that people are spending crazy amounts of money on their outfits and their costumes and their package. Like, it is crazy. Did you spend a lot of money on your outfits and stuff? Looking back on it, if I made it any further, I'd be like, what do you have to wear? I was like really? Chi-Chi. I was like Chi-Chi level of stuff. I did not like really have, I bought a lot of like 
I could only sew a bodysuit at the time. So I was like, oh, I'll just make a bodysuit when I get there. And I had a couple of things. A friend, I, I just did not understand my aesthetic or like, I knew a couple things I liked, but translating that into drag race, like the outfit I got sent home in, it's trash. It was trash when I got it. It was trash. Like it, it was not for me, but I was like, well, I don't wear dresses. I have to wear a dress. So here's a dress. It's a pretty color. Like I just didn't understand anything. I only brought flat straight wigs. I just didn't really get it i just didn't have as much knowledge or whatever so i i think i spent a lot of money just buying supplies but i didn't like i did not break the bank getting like designers or anything like i, I did not have anything i had like a couple nice outfits and a couple like drag leotards in retrospect i was like i don't have that much <laughs> i also i'll say at the time, there was less people working. Like, it's very accessible to get, like, there's so many people who make wigs. There's so many designers who make drag clothes. There are so many more, even though expensive, accessible things. And if you look back, like, I was in New Hampshire and Boston area, okay? The girls who, like, got a lot of fancy stuff on the show prior to that were, like, New York and L.A. girls because they were in hot spots for, like, not just drag, but like all kinds of like performing performance and shows and um, recordings and film and TV and all that stuff. And if you look back, like uh, Juju B, um, even Katya during her season and Jocelyn Fox, like the, look at the area that we are from. It's not an accessible area where there's like a lot of designers. So it's like they all kind of had basic outfits or like what they could find in stores around or make themselves so it was it was a different time and, and like you said it wasn't on vh1 yet like literally there wasn't a lip sync for your life yet or legacy sorry and you know you you guys were in just such a different headspace you end up in the bottom two for the first episode and you perform applause by lady gaga that um, did happen that did happen you know do you <laughs> What do you think? Have you watched that back recently? Um, I don't really like to watch myself. I think I watched that one a, a couple times. Um, uh, that first episode, I was like, okay, I get it. Um, I'd like to say on this topic, everyone loves to say that I went home first because Nasha came back. I would like to reiterate that Nasha's face was on the pork chop lounge for everyone who went home first this past season. So I just want to point that out. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh sorry bad cough <laughs> oh 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 but 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 i mean it's no. true that pork top lounge um yeah so when we were doing the like critiques i did i do not i did not get how reality tv worked i genuinely didn't so like also um i went to art school so we just sit around getting critiqued every friggin' goddamn day and it's so boring so when they like they pull up the photo of me like squatting like a potato in front of all the winners. And they're like, so Layla, what do you think of this picture? It's not really great. And I looked at it, I go, yeah, it's terrible. That is not great. I don't, I don't think that they liked that I rolled with the punches. Like I felt like almost like they wanted me to be like, oh my God, my outfit is so good. I can't believe they don't like it or whatever. But when Michelle's like, there's not a lot going on in the bottom. I'm like, yeah, there really isn't. I just kind of had time for the top. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So you you get past the first episode. Nasha Lopez does go home first, and then the second episode comes around. And girl, you end up in the bottom two to this song that I would die at. I will survive by Gloria Gaynor. You're with Dax. I know that I had read that when you were in Untucked, you Bob was telling you to perform it some way. Is that correct? Yeah, Bob was helping me, telling me I should open my skirt. And Bob, Bob is, I love, Bob is probably my closest friend from the season. And Aww. always so, like, she was just so supportive of other people. But, like, she was like, girl, you should really sell it like this. Use your skirt. I got too nervous. That performance I've watched once because someone said, wow, you know, she didn't know the words. I go, I know the words. I just am having a full-on anxiety attack while I'm performing. So it's not a good performance because I'm like, I don't know what's happening. I feel yeah. so shitty that I was like, I just don't know. I was like, my feet hurt. My out. I feel ugly. I was just like, oh. So yeah, Bob did help me in Untucked a little. Did it translate? Absolutely not. <laughs> 
So Rue sends you guys both home. Did you expect that to happen? No, I did not. So you were shooketh. I didn't know who was going to hit it because I was so nervous, but I didn't, I did not, you know, I wasn't expecting a double elimination. And when it happened in my head, I was like, yeah, why wouldn't it have? <laughs> like, damn. I, it's so funny with you talking about this because you seem like you're actually content with how everything went over in the way of like, Oh no, I was miserable. Now. <laughs> well, well, you were miserable then, but now looking back on it, you realize like you've grown a lot, you know? I also, I went there, was like, I'm going to have fun. Who knows? And then I got there and was like, oh, filming this is different. Not in a bad way. I just was new to it. I didn't understand it. So I was very anxious. And then I got the boot and was like, oh, damn, that really sucks. And then for those six months between it filming and it airing i just sat basically a version of how quarantine's been sitting around being like you're shit no one's gonna fucking like you this is gonna be shit everyone's gonna be you're gonna be a joke everyone's gonna be embarrassed by you and then when we had the opportunity we were also the last season to do a premiere tour so we went to five different cities and i was like they haven't seen the show yet so i'm gonna do my best i'm gonna have fun i'm gonna do the numbers that i like to do and i honestly was like I don't think I was like, I'm never going to get booked locally anymore. I am. I will probably end up with maybe 15,000 followers on Instagram. If that on, um, I'm going to be a joke and I'm not going to do anything. And then when it turned out that that wasn't happening, I was like, well, I'm just going to have fun. And I ended up going everywhere and doing everything and trying to put my best foot forward. I forget what the initial question was. Oh, I just, it's, I, I, I don't look back. Like it was miserable and weird at the time. And I got in my head, but then I'm also like, well, that's how it went. So what am I going to do? Am I going to sit around telling telling people, you're right, I was robbed. I'm going to be like, no, I'm just, I'm really pretty and fun. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And if people want to tune in, they can or they can't. And they have been. So it's been really cool. I I absolutely love that. And I love too that you, you've had a really good support and fandom behind you ever since your elimination. Do you, what what do you think is the coolest thing about the fans that you have gained? I feel like I have a lot of like fans that actually are interested in me. Like, I feel like I don't have like, I feel like I have a lot of fans that are actually fans of the work I do rather than they were fans of drag race. So they follow me just cause I was on drag race. I feel like at this point, the people who do follow me and send me accolades and are really nice, I feel like have been with me for a while now and I've done so much since the show and I've like I traveled a lot I like I was very surprised like going home as soon as I did I was one of the girls during our year of tour like our year our reigning year of our season that probably traveled the most comparatively to like a lot of them so it was just like really cool you talked about your time afterwards and how you were hard on yourself and kind of quarantining and kind of staying for that six months in between. Um, was that the most negative thing to happen to you after the show? Yeah, I was actually kind of surprised at how, how people didn't really drag me through the mud, kind of like they do these other girls. I don't know why. I don't, I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to be appreciative that it happened you know i was expecting i also am my own worst enemy and a perfectionist and things like that and really get into my head so i think maybe maybe people were awful to me i just thought they were going to be worse so it was not as crazy as i imagined i don't i don't i honestly don't know but i'm very grateful regardless of all in any support then yeah. and now i i think it's i think it's pretty crazy like just seeing like like you said like you know when you have that support force behind you that is supporting your actual art and what you're actually doing says so much more than people who just follow a queen and don't support you know and totally i think that there's a very small uh group of of you guys who actually have that behind you and of course it's probably before it technically went to vh <laughs> vh1 um you have been doing a lot of jackets and stuff that I am absolutely addicted to. I think it's so cool. Like, where did that inspiration come from in like designing something now? Um, so I I knew how to sew a little bit when I went on Drag Race. Like I said, I could make the bodysuits and whatever, like nothing crazy. But then um, 
really, this still goes back to like, after I got on Drag Race, I took every opportunity I could to travel and meet people and experience other queer places. I really truly do n didn't think I was queer until I didn't really know what it meant to be queer until I traveled around. And I took every opportunity and made some amazing friends and mentors who really like helped me do things. And I started my friend, my really good friend, Dallas, the Lady Hyde, has helped me so, so much and learned so much over the years. And I really enjoy it. And I just love jackets. I love wearing them and have been progressively like as I learn how to sew I start making things for out of drag clothes and then I was like just during quarantine I was like I sold a couple like one-offs that I made and there's like a really good response so I was like I should keep doing this it's a lot to do in my apartment by myself so that's why they're like small quantities but like mm -hmm. it just kind of happened and it kind of also goes back to what I was saying about like doing makeup on we're here like I'm really glad to be um doing these other things that are still in my skill set that are just cool or improving on other skills I have or working on different areas that are not just like me, like throwing my body on bar floors every night, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we all love throwing our, our body on bar floors and I, oh, I'm I miss it. for that to happen again. Like, I it miss means, it. Right? You, wait, wait, did you ever find the jacket that got lost with Crystal Method? Bitch, no. W what a f what a travesty. It was so cool. The whole time I'm making it, I'm like, I can't believe I have to give this to someone else. <laughs> and then it turns out Crystal didn't even get it. <laughs> so sad. Especially I know. like it because it looked beautiful. And I was like, Jesus, like. I was in my I was in my feels for a moment. It's a bummer. I'll make Crystal another jacket when we're done filming. We're here and I have time. But like, uh, I was in my feels for a moment. I get in my feels about stupid things, and I really try not to go on Twitter because I like after this whole year, um, my mental state is a fragile, fragile, fragile thing. So staying on the internet is like something I'm trying not to do. But like on Twitter, when I was like, hey guys, I'm not looking for attention. Just please, if you see someone ever wearing a piece of this jacket, rip it off them, give it back. I, it is stolen. I know it's a cute jacket. I'm not trying to be here for like to get accolades. I'm just, please, it's MIA. And I was like, I was blocking people left and right for just being like, oh my God, sickening. I want one. Are you on All Stars? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm in my feels. I also, speaking about being in my feels, I realized after Cheryl Hole, love Cheryl Hole, I realized after she got on Drag Race, I went to go look her up on Twitter and it said I had her blocked. I was like, what did she do? What did I do that I had Cheryl blocked? I was like, oh my God. Cut to this year. I'm looking through an old chat trying to find a meme of a friend. I found screenshots from years ago of Cheryl Hole. She tweeted, Mr. Brightside is the worst song ever made facts or facts or whatever and i blocked her because of that and i blocked everyone in the comments who Stop agreed with it, it. <laughs> because i was in a mood <laughs> you were like nobody talks about that song i like wow drag me sis <laughs> oh my goodness that is absolutely hilarious chaos poor cheryl hole did you unblock her oh, of course i love her she's fantastic <laughs> I stand by I stand by my original sentiment though. She's wrong. Uh, we have a fan question for you. This is from GJ Bearclaw. Uh, they oh her? Say, yeah, oh her. You know, just that <laughs> that random name. As clearly one of the best visual artists ever, under showcased on RuPaul's Drag Race. How was your experience? with the show and how did you deal with um wow affecting your art creativity and self-expression um i don't think wow did anything to negatively impact me i mean like i honestly the, the way reality tv is filmed it's not that wow is shady or editing or producing bitch that happens every show and with reality shows it's just a little bit more intense because it's a different than like like when we film we're here it's 
docu-series style. And there's interviews and stuff like that, but it's not reality. It's not scripted, but that's just how TV works. And I went into it so young, not knowing anything. Um, so I just didn't get how it works. So I was thrown through a loop of the style of how things are filmed, the waiting, you know, getting ready to wait and the long pauses, because also I was an avid, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Drag Race. That's why I wanted to go on the show because it, it's fun. And you don't, the things that happen in post-production, the little noises, the little sound effects, the little like music, the track, you don't realize if you've never worked in TV before and you're a, a, non, a young naive person, when you go into film it, those things aren't there when things are filmed. So it's a lot of awkward things and it's not a detriment to wow. I just did not understand that. So I was never like, and I didn't do a good job. I didn't take chances. I thought about it too much and not enough. I was too quiet. Again, I was a completely different person. So different. Like I remember for the bitch perfect number, I'll always regret when we were picking um, parts, I was like, uh oh, I've branded myself as gothy. So I really need to be like, prim and proper and pretty and i forget what one of the the not um the challenge producer or whatever when they explained the challenge to us i was like oh no i feel like i i can't be rough around the edges i need to just look pretty and perfect to show how different i am which what the fuck and so i was they were like layla you should do the robbie's the one robbie got with the deep voice i was like i don't know if the judges will like that that's like I didn't think of it as funny. And then I also, at the end of the number, I wanted to rip my shirt open and pop all my buttons like Fat Amy. But then I don't know if someone said something where I was like, well, are they going to hate that? Because it's like, I was like, I was just in my head. So like World of Wonder, see, I keep going off on tangents. This Wi-Fi. But, but no, you're, you're telling parts of, of like the story and I love it because it's funny because you start on one thing and then it triggers like this other thing and I like I'm learning so much more. So what I just learned from all of that conversation is that you were sitting at the work table waiting for the shade button to be hit multiple times and to hear the sound of <laughs> It's just certain things like it's just I just didn't know and when we got out World of Wonder did not do anything to be like no you can't do this you can't do that I don't know what the deal with the contracts is now I know there's a lot of people talking about it I do not know what the qualifications I do not know what World of Wonder owns what the girls can and can't say we are from so long ago mm -hmm. um, it wasn't an issue WoW never created uh wow never like held me back creatively they had me on a bunch of world of wonder shows i was on their a lot of youtube things like they've always been pretty nice to me so um i've been able to do whatever i want i've gone everywhere doing whatever the hell i want so yeah. anything anything that i'm not getting done is purely on my own accord <laughs> and being <laughs> absolutely lazy I don't post well, YouTube videos because World of Wonder says, bitch, you can't post shit. I don't post them because I hate editing things and I'm lazy. <laughs> um, GJ Bearclaw, Layla McQueen's response is, is that it was not while wow doing it. It's just that she was lazy that day. So, you know, it is what it is. In all, all the days. <laughs> you, it just gets so exhausting being so beautiful, you know? You had to take away all the mirrors from your actual place. No mirrors. Trixie just sent me this mirror from the little James thing. It looks, like, looks balls. like a butt. Oh, it looks like balls. It does. It looks like some testes. <laughs> ah! Um, you you ended up. You also you know got to. You said that Wow's been like keeping you around, and they did keep you around, especially for like celebrity secret drag race that you know you were on a little clip on the internet not in real life it made me sad um how how was that experience and actually doing the celebrities makeup because i think that was one thing i didn't know until i researched more is that like you would swoop in right and then do other people's makeup is that what it was yeah i don't know how much i'm supposed to talk about this but um yeah we me mayhem and chanel did the celebrities makeup um it was fun. Like, I, also, they, I was not, when I got asked to do that, we were hired not, like, we were not like, hey, you're going to be on camera. Like, mm -hmm. no one really knew what was going on until we got there, but we were hired as behind scene makeup artists initially. Um, to be totally honest, that was like my first, like, real makeup gig. Really? 
I didn't want to say that to them there. Like I've painted friends before, but like I've just always just done makeup on myself. I've never worked at Mac or Sephora or a counter or anything like that. Um, so it was like my first makeup gig and it was fun. The celebrity, the celebrities we had, like I'm a huge fan of Shit's Creek. Oh, so yes. like when we heard that Dustin was going to be there, I was like, I will fight the two of you. I'm painting Dustin. It is happening. I am putting Ted in Layla drag. You fight me. Um, I didn't have to fight anyone, but he was like, it was so fun because he's like a fan of the show. When I came into the workroom, he was like, I was like, hey, I'm, he goes, oh my God, you're Layla. I'm like, you reckon you know me? I was like, that was kind of a gag. And he was super nice and down for everything. And mm -hmm. It was just fun. There was no pressure. It was just like a good time. I had a very fun time on Celebrity Drag Race. And I've never really worked with Chanel or Mayhem. And also working at a bar is very different than us being on set in our, our little cluster every day. And I got along with them really well. It was really, it was a really fun time. Were, were those episodes shot in just a day or was it like a couple of day span? Um, I think it took two days to film one episode. I, I think two, I think we were there for like, two weeks or a week and a half or something i think i think they blocked out for two weeks and i think there was a break between episodes and i want to say it took two days per episode there was four yeah yeah when, it was, wait com compared to drag race when your time on there is that normally like a two to three day process per episode or is that longer for episodes so when i was on drag race things were a little different like um like for the like boy interview or like talking head confessional moments. Uh, every other season has mainly done them, I think at the end of every day. Mm -hmm. And on our season, they switched it up. So we did all of our confessions for the entire week just on Saturdays, oh, wow. which I don't know. I'm, I wasn't there long enough for it to be a huge hurdle. Um, but each episode would take like, two days mm -hmm. about i think some it's, of the, i think it's some so of the ones crazy. towards the end are three uh -huh. looking at your time after drag race what has been the highlight of your career after i'm very glad that i was a couple things that things did not turn out nearly as bad as i imagined in my head I am very grateful that I got to travel so much and make a living off of this for quite a quite a while and to be able to move to a queer city that is really cool. Um, I'm just happy I got to work and travel and do really awesome things. Like um, I was the first RuPaul's Drag Race girl to ever perform in Wellington, New Zealand, which felt really cool. And they put my face on a bus and I'll always just oh. be gagged by that. I know some girls like do a lot of things and are, some girls are real famous now, but I still am like, that is cool for me. Going from someone who's like, I'm doing this just for fun to then going to like, you're never going to do no anything. Everything's going to be shit. And then to be headlining as the first person to be in a, a completely different country. I was like, that's cool. That's really cool. I'll always be proud of, I'll always be proud of that. And your face on a bus, ah, oh, like that's it's just cool. I want my face on a bus with like the muffler coming out of my mouth. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, since since this is exposed, and since you know, why not expose something? What is something that happened on the show, whether it be? something funny, a behind the scenes moment, stressful or anything like that, that didn't make it to air? Was there anything that you were happy with, sad with, scared about that, you know, was a fun moment? That didn't make it. Okay. There's just like a couple funny moments. Like the first day we shot after we all met each other, the power went out in the whole... <laughs> The power went out, so we were just, like, sitting around doing nothing for, like, a while. And did this freeze again? No, I'm fine. Did you freeze? You're there. Okay. So the power went out, and so we had to keep going to different, like, studio, like, places in the lot. And so I remember we were sitting outside, and I was just talking to Thorgy. I was like, girl, what would you bring for Madonna? 
And she was like, bitch, you're going to gag. I brought a kimono. Nothing really matters. And I was like, oh, my God, so did I. I brought other stuff, but also so did I. And then Derek was like, are you guys talking about kimonos? And then Naomi was like, I also brought a kimono. And then Nisha pops out of nowhere and is like, Mary, are we talking Madonna kimonos? And I'm like, this is insane. I guess that's not really like TT, but like that was just funny to me that if you could just picture Thorgy being like, <gasps> while she's painting her nails red with a Crayola marker, because she's like, oh, I forgot to paint my nails. Should I just do it now? All I have is this red marker. I'm like, where'd you even get that? Um, those are all funny moments to me. Like I, I miss those little moments. Like I first decided I really liked Bob, uh, just the way her attitude is. But after we did our first talking head confessionals, she came in, she goes, she just told us, all of us, like, I feel like most girls are like, oh, yeah, uh-huh, we filmed whatever. You'll see when it airs. Bob came in the first time and goes, yeah, Layla, I said you were really nice, but I hated your shoes and your hair looks like shit. And just the <laughs> way she said it, I was like, oh, I like you. I appreciate that. Um, also, Chi-Chi was the funniest person when Cam she was the funniest person ever. But, like, there was moments when the cameras went down where it's like, the food we got, I I was not a fan of the food, and Chi Chi's big into like soul food, and so like there was one moment where we were having lunch, and none of us were, were not supposed to talk during lunch, and we got for like tender greens or some one of those LA, you know, lettuce restaurants, <laughs> and we're just all kind of sitting in silence, and Chi Chi just goes, "Y'all, my my salad tastes like perfume," and just kind of looks around. <laughs> It was, she, she did she had so many moments like that that like those obviously didn't make it to air because they weren't recording but i was like i love moments like that i don't know if i really have anything to expose i wasn't there for that long but i look back on like those cute little moments very fondly i mean that that's so awesome i think it's so funny too that like it was like the first day and the power ends up going out and then that's when you learn about kimonos for the first time also what was in the actual sheet that you got? Did it say, please wear a kimono? Like, why were there so many kimonos, do you think? We all had the same idea. I brought, so I brought a kimono. I also brought, um, like, a virgin. I also brought just, like, regular standard 80s Madonna, mm -hmm. like, basically this without the mustache and, like, a mesh top. Um, and I also brought... Um, the bullfighter outfit from Rebel Heart. I was like, oh, I'll bring options. Cause I was like, people are probably, I, I wanted to do like a virgin, but I was like, that was my first choice. Cause I've done it before. I think it's fun and flirty. And I was like, everyone's going to do this. Everyone's going to do this in cone bra. And so I was just watching Madonna videos. I was like, oh, I had these red shoes that were like those like Gaga heelless heels. I was like, oh, I have the shoes. Maybe I should just make a kimono. It'll be like pretty easy. It'll be different from the things I'm already bringing. I was like, okay. And maybe no one will be doing it. We all had the same thought. I will say though, okay, here's some, here's some tea. <laughs> Sis, um, so Nasha, they were not planning on bringing her back. They flew her home. And then me and Dax fucking bombed that ship that they're like, can we get the Continental girl back here, please? No shade. That's whatever. I, we did bad. That's fine. I stand by. Uh, I don't, it happened. But um, Bob, I was, because we filmed confessionals on Saturdays, um, they were still filming episodes and we got sent home on like a Tuesday. So we were there for like while they filmed um we were there up until Cynthia got eliminated, like wow. fully. So like Bob would write what happened during the day on a piece of paper and slide it under my door. And Bob would let me know everything that happened every day. Uh, but they didn't know Nasha was coming back. They genuinely didn't. And it wasn't until like, I, I would always try to like, get people I was so bored and alone I would always try to get the PAs to come like help me with something or talk to me about a TV show so like while everyone's slipping notes under their door going can I please get this food I'm like did anyone just watch what happened on whatever on Ink Masters or whatever like I was just looking for conversation so I had all these ridiculous notes under my door and when everyone got back from set one day like the day before I left they knocked on my door and I opened it and it was the whole cast. They're like, bitch, we knew this was your door. And they like came to all hug me and say hello, even though that's not supposed to happen. And then Nasha kind of popped up and was like, Mary. And I was like, you're back. She's like, yeah, bitch, they just flew me back. They brought me back. I was like, 
oh, good for you, girl. Damn. And then she, like, asked me if she could borrow my shoes for the kimono runway. And I ignored her note and cried because I was sad that they brought her back <laughs> that first day. I was like, she was like, Mary, can I borrow your Madonna shoes? I was like, yeah, let me look for them. And I was like, I'm not giving her these shoes. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think the biggest misconception of Layla McQueen is? I feel like some people are like always surprised when I do something cool or like, I feel like, the, like I said earlier, there's the people who really follow me and really pay attention to what I do. And then there's like fans of Drag Race as of like lately, like fans of the franchise rather than fans of drag yeah. in general. So I think misconceptions lay within more so the fans of um, the show and base all their opinions off of what happens on the show and placement and things like that. So I think there's a lot of misconceptions or like when people are surprised that I like do cool makeup or I do other things or like I'm not the same person I was six years ago. I think there's that kind of a misconception. Uh, like I said earlier, I try to stay off of like, I've never gone on Reddit. I try not to go on things like that. So I don't know what the biggest misconception would be. What do you want people to remember you by? Like, what do you what do you hope when you perform at a show or your time on Drag Race or your makeup or your skills? What do you want people to know you by? I've always pride my drag on maybe not being perfect or, you know, I'm not a, you know, a singer, dancer. I can sew. I do makeup really well. Like I do, I am good at drag, but if anything, I really try to um, make my experience in drag with other people a good time. Like if anyone takes anything is that they had a really fun time, honestly. Um, I used to work at a strip club, not dancing at a strip club, but like in college, I used to work at this little store inside of a strip club, like near the champagne room. So I sold <laughs> like thongs and shoes and sex toys and things like that. And I would work there for a little bit and then hang out at the bar and watch how the girls operated. And the girls who like, there's obviously the ones who know how to work a person over and are like very like social, but in terms of like performing on stage the girls who did songs that they liked songs that the guys liked rock music things that were like not just like okay everyone loves top 40 i have to do top 40 like mm -hmm. the people who had fun uh on stage the people watching them had fun watching them and i always kind of have abide by that and like that's why i like to do a lot of songs that are like throwback songs or sing-along songs or like when you're drunk in a nightclub you might not listen to the song all the time but when it comes on these speakers you know every word it's just like i like i like um i just like creating a fun good time atmosphere where everyone can like have fun and i look stunning while i do it so I, I love this confidence. Jesus, you weren't confident in, in your season, but that confidence has grown. Damn. I'm telling you, I was a completely different person. I didn't know shit about anything. I, I think that you were a completely different. Because if I were to go right now, hold on while I do this, because I think and if the internet fucks up, then fuck you, internet. I want to pull this. Whatever, we're, right ro now. we're rolling with the punches regardless. Like, a, um, you know. We've been filming for 14 hours, but this is going to be a 20 minute episode. <laughs> Just like Drag Race. <laughs> Fully. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh -oh. Look Drag me. at you and me. Can you believe that? God, I got to get my lips done. What a horrible, <laughs> what a villainless, villain. what does Katya say? Villainously thin upper lip. I did look pretty that day. I'll stand by. You I did, did look, look pretty. I did look pretty. You you divulged to me that um, you missed, oh, you were going to be Teresa Caputo or um, you said Betsy Johnson or Courtney Love for Snatch Game. You told me that. Yeah, which also options that I was like, what am I going to do with these? I'm not saying who I would do again, just in case I ever go back. I don't want to like- you, Would you go back for an All-Stars? If the timing was right, yes. I think I've always said, yes, I'll go back. I get kind of annoyed. People really, as of lately, kind of like um, bombard me with that. So I've appreciated you not asking that until I really brought it up. Um, I feel like a lot of fans lately really, really, um, which 
in their defense, they see how much I've grown. So they like want me back. But at a certain point, until it happens, we need to like chill out. And I feel like my work should be appreciated for my work as separately, not like a, this is good. You should be on all stars because this is good. Like yeah. it can just be good on its own. With that said, yes, I'll go back. Um, if they ask me and if I'm in a okay mental place, this year kind of done fucked up, you know, some some things mentally. So yeah. financially, mentally, if I am, if they call me and I am feeling like I could have fun with it rather than, you know, be, I don't want to go on and be just as anxious and wild as I was yeah. last time because of how things have gone this year or so forth. So if I'm ever, if, it, if the stars align, they do. If they don't, I'm still going to be, doing fun stuff like this with horrible wi-fi you know <laughs> and and what's next for you what do you have down the pipeline for the rest of this year um people are really liking the jackets i'm doing um i'm hoping now that the world's opening again i want to start painting more people like before covid happened um roscoe's in chicago brings a lot of the dolls here for viewing parties and sometimes for like two nights so i really want to start a series where i do makeup on like my other drag race sisters and Stop, other people that would be amazing it would be so cool i really want to i want to work on these other areas of mm. things that i do so i do want to create more jackets i want to make more things to sell um i want to do makeup on other people you know covid permitting things like that um as of right now we're here is taking vast major of uh, like priority in my life it is i'm so i love working on we're here i love the cast the crew everyone i love what we do i love working with bob it's a really great time so as of right now um that's that's what's up that's what's up if bars open up performing happens if all stars happens if something happens i'm here to roll with the punches all permitting but as of now i'm enjoying just like getting in drag and taking fun pictures and then working on we're here doing makeup oh well I when some... your jackets when your jackets go back up and when you put them up i'm gonna have to get one i'm gonna have to to purchase they sold, purchase out, so, and then... they sold out so fast i was like I, so no i was kind of i was kind of surprised i was kind of surprised and very very grateful i want the the goal was to make like a lot more but i also make them out of like as much recycled materials as i can so it was like 30 pairs of extra wide jeans that I was bleaching and dyeing and carefully taking apart. I was like, this is a lot. And I thought I got enough to make like 20 pairs. I was like, mm, girl, you have enough for 10. So we'll just do a, <laughs> a we'll just do 10. You, you, you have enough for a pocket square. <laughs> Seriously. I spent a, I spent a week, my knuckles are completely bloody and I'm like, okay, so we can make a, a bangle. <laughs> Ah, well, thank you so much for being here, Layla. Where can everybody find you on the socials? On the socials, I'm on Instagram at Miss Layla McQueen, M I S S L A I L A McQueen. You know how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Twitter for now under just Layla McQueen. Um, but also, I started a design page that I post all the jackets and things that I make. Um, it's called Devlin's in the details, D-E-V-L-I-N-S in the details. It's like my last, my government last name is Devlin. And, you know, it kind of sounds like devil, devils in the details. Oh, oh yes. So, so clever. So clever oh, and oh. so not easy for people to spell when you say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> In true drag queen fashion, we're trying to be cute and make it difficult for everyone. <laughs> yes, I mean, how how else would you do that? You know, like Layla, L A Y L A, right? You know, there's no I, right? You're so hateful. Ah! <laughs> you're, you're such a bitch. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Layla. And, and until next time, I'm Joseph Shepard. I'll see you guys later. Bye.